Hey, check them out. How are you guys doing? We have quite a bit to talk about. I was really surprised when Ralph reached out to me and told me there was a Sophie reader update. Uh, I'm happy about this, that it's still people looking into this still ongoing. And so if you haven't seen this story, you need to check out the video. I'll put the links down below. I made this video just a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is the most revised version that I've done. I did one also in the beginning of 2019. And also we did a live stream after, which I thought the live stream was great. I thought that uh, we got into some new details I didn't know about either. And then today, just yesterday, another update came out from Channel 7 and Detective Jennifer St. John. I thank both of them, Channel 7 and the detective that's still working on this case. We're going to see some of the updates regarding that. We're going to get into a little bit of Leila Cavett at the end of this video. I feel like we're overdue for a live stream. We need to do a live stream. I have my daughter though. So it would have to be either late tonight or we can leave it for tomorrow sometime this weekend where we can do something more relaxed and not so late. Also want to give a quick thank you to the donations, the recent ones, Melinda. Thank you so much. Dre, Latina, Crystal, Ralph. And thank you guys for supporting and the channel members too. I really appreciate you guys. By the way, the channel members video will come out today. I was still waiting on confirmation for what I was told. I still haven't gotten the confirmation. So we're going to leave it to rumors in the channel members area regarding Shannon. So let's get into this. You guys definitely comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this whole story. And if you haven't seen the story, make sure you check out the links below and watch the story, share it, familiarize yourself, share her picture, share her story. This was in uh, Fort Lauderdale, right? 2017. The new on the 19 tonight is a parent. Nothing is more terrifying than the thought of your child going missing. One Fort Lauderdale family knows that pain. Now, more than three years after their 15-year-old daughter disappeared, the Seven Investigates team is learning new details about this case. Here's Seven's Kevin Ozebeck. Sophie Reeder had a smile that lit up her face. I think about it all the time. Detective Jennifer St. Jean says this is the case that haunts her. This mother of five would like nothing more than to find out what happened to Sophie. I constantly think about what can I do different, what can I look at, what angle can I think of. Sophie disappeared more than three years ago on May 20th, 2017, while she was out for a late night walk. Her parents are divorced and at the time she was living with her father. We know that she did on a regular basis go for walks, so that wasn't necessarily unusual. Um, the unusual part came when she just didn't come back home. And I wonder what the walks, are they talking about late night walks? Because I think I saw in another video that the mother was saying, you know, she was kind of, you know, in her rebellious stage, teenager, and then she was going on these night walks, I guess. That's, you know, so I guess that was a usual thing. Court records obtained by Seven Investigate show Sophie left her father's house. A candle burning in her bedroom. See, I didn't know about that. With a candle burning in her bedroom and $300 cash in a bag near her bed. All signs she did not run away. She walked down the street, kind of meandered in the area for a while. Um, then we have her going eastbound on Davy. Uh, Boulevard. Fort Lauderdale police use cell tower records and Google account locations to make this map of Sophie's route. Security camera video shows Sophie walking through the neighborhood. Fort, Fort Lauderdale police use cell tower records and Google account locations. So are these the cell tower pings? What's up with this one all the way over here? Davy Boulevard. I used to work by this area too. Broward. I used to work at Broward Medical Health. Um, that area at night can be very sketchy. A lot of homeless people. It's not a not a place to be walking around at night, especially a young girl. Davy Boulevard. To make this map of Sophie's route, security camera video shows Sophie walking through the neighborhoods. She's by herself. Um, other than that, we have no idea what she was doing in the area. Sophie's phone either died or was turned off at Southwest 11th Court in Fort Lauderdale. There's no question she was in this neighborhood. Absolutely. That night. That's not Into that early morning. Right. And this is her last known whereabouts. It is. Hey, we should go visit the neighborhood, huh? We got the new camera. Maybe we need to go to this neighborhood. I mean, it's years after the fact, but Southwest 11th, 18th. Uh. Southwest 11th Court in Fort Lauderdale. There's no question she was in this neighborhood. Absolutely. That night. That's not Into that question. early morning. Right. 
And this is her last known whereabouts. It is. Before her phone signal dropped, detectives believe she was in contact with two men in this neighborhood. Police suspect both men at the time were dealing in dark, dangerous, and illegal underground activity. So you can tell us now, a suspected drug dealer, a suspected trafficker. Yes. Right. Sophie's mom, Nicole, says she had been worried about her daughter. When I went through her room, I saw things like um, uh, stockings and garter belts. And, mm. and we learned about this in the live stream portion. I might pull up that video just to take a quick look at it. But we learned about this in the live stream portion. There was another media uh, company. I'll, I'll put it up and I'll let you guys know. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Uh, but there was crazy stuff that was found in there, in her room, I think. About her daughter. When I went through her room, I saw things like um, uh, stockings and garter belts and booze, drugs. That's and I was just surprised that she would even think about bringing that to my house. She picked the wrong crowd um, to hang out with, and I totally believe social media and uh, being on the computer and talking to the wrong uh, people led to her disappearance. Police say Sophie would go on websites to find so-called sugar daddies, men who want relationships with young women. And oh, young man. women looking for older men can sometimes be forced into sex trafficking. It's very prevalent in South Florida and unfortunately it's so easy to get entangled into it and not even know necessarily right away that you're involved in it until you're so deep into it that you don't know how to get out. If Sophie is still alive, she's 18 years old now. This poster shows what she might look like, but what it doesn't show is the type of life Sophie might be living. As a mom, I have conflicted feelings that even if maybe it would be better for her to be dead um, than have the life that she's having now. What does she have to do to survive? And I just can imagine what kind of hell. I think she's probably strung out on drugs and having a prostitute. That fear is the reason Detective St. Jean will not give up the search. The grim reality is she could be in a very dark situation right now, which is why we're hoping for any tips or any leads that can get us information so that we can locate her safely. She will not close the case until she gets an answer to the question, what happened to Sophie Reader? Kevin Ozebeck, 7 News. Well, Sophie's father declined that request for an interview. If you have any information. I thought that was interesting, too, that the father declined request for the interview. In the beginning, I think he talked a little bit. I mean, I did see video clips with him. But the person that I've seen the most talking and talking with, you know, trying to do these press things and trying to get on the news and trying to, you know, to keep attention on it is the mother from what I've seen. You got to remember they were divorced. They separated it. And at one point, uh, Sophie wanted to stay with the father. Uh, let's take a look at the other clip that I was talking about that we saw in the live stream. So I'm going to play a portion of this. This is from Long Crime. One of their episodes vanished. Uh, and let's listen to a little bit of this. She had problems with authority and didn't want to be told what to do. It was a habit of hers, unfortunately, that she would walk late at night. See? She wouldn't tell anybody or inform anybody that she was sneaking out. This is, I believe, a, a close friend of Sophie's. Nicole was, you know, was a strict mother and didn't want her child out past, you know, normal hours and she didn't want to get in trouble. We used to egg churches and you know, that rebel kid, teenager life. Sometimes she would come home and she would destroy the house. She would be violent. She would say she, she wished I would die. It was terrible. It was, I didn't know what to do. If I look back on it, I probably would say she was suffering some, some kind of mental illness. And it came to a point where Sophie didn't like the rules and ended up moving back to her father's location in Fort Lauderdale. Her relationship with her father wasn't very close. When she moved in with him, I think that she thought it was gonna be something that it wasn't. He wouldn't ask anything. Where are you going? Who, what friends are you hanging out with? Just like he didn't necessarily care. 
She had all the freedom that she wanted. She could do whatever she wanted, yet she still wasn't happy. I found um, garter belts, lingerie, liquor, a BB gun. I was completely shocked. I, I literally had a pain attack for 20 minutes. That's pretty crazy. Can you imagine like going through your child's, uh, she was 15 by the way at the time, I believe she was 15. So, I mean, she's a teenager, you know, they start going through that phase, you know, but in the other video, she stated that she found drugs. In this one, she stated also a BB gun. Like, can you just imagine going through your child's backpack or whatever, or their belongings, and you're finding all this stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man. And I, I confronted her about it. Sophie just smirks. You could never get a straight answer out of Sophie. Sophie was not a confident child. And then all of a sudden she's like overbearingly confident. She was just saying how beautiful she was, how she could be a star, how she could be a model. Another girl would walk by and she would say, oh, that girl is not as beautiful as I am. I'm like, what are you talking about? So this was the last time the uh, Sophie's mother saw her was Mother's Day in 2017. Uh, and she went missing in May 20th, May 20th. She said she, she noticed a change in her. Yeah, there was a difference with her. I didn't recognize that person. The last thing I said to her is, Sophie, please promise me that you won't be out late at night. Whatever you're doing, you need to stop. Her dad had said that he hadn't seen her for four days and was she with at my house. When I heard this news, I was worried. It's a little weird to me too, like, so if I'm interpreting this right, which I might be interpreting it wrong, he calls her four days after the fact. Like, hey, I haven't seen her for four days. I'm just calling you to let you know. Can you imagine you? Like, I want to know day one. That that morning you wake up and she's not there, I need to get a call. I mean, I call daily anyway, but I mean, I I guess at teenage years, maybe it's different, you know, versus a toddler and stuff. Just thinking about myself. I didn't know what to think. I couldn't even grasp it. I thought she would come back, but she never did. My partner saw a missing poster of a, of a child in Fort Lauderdale, and when I called the number, I ended up talking to Sylvie's mother, Nicole. We've been talking for the past two and a half years regarding this case and trying to get some type of answers. Surveillance showed Sophie walking down the sidewalk at 10 p.m. wearing headphones, shorts, and some type of jacket. And then once she gets out of the camera view, no telling where she went to or with who. So we're going to leave it at that. If you want to watch their entire video, you can check them out on Facebook, Law and Crime. We covered it on the live stream. You watched the entire video. It's about eight minutes long. Uh, and you guys comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on that whole situation. I hope something comes of this. I hope that these little updates keep coming and keeping her name in the media. It's been a long time, you know, but uh, this is happening everywhere. As far as the Layla Cavett landfill situation, there was a lot of comments yesterday and people wondering why has it taken so long for the search to happen at the landfills. It should have happened months ago. A lot of people brought it up and I thought it was interesting to add this bit of information. Kara sent it to me after I made yesterday's video and uh, Buckley Law Group, which is the attorney people working for the family or, or for Layla, um, they posted this. While many of you know they took the dumpsters from the gas station parking lot to search for evidence, the FBI never made a public statement on if they did or did not find anything. As many of you know, they have been searching. As many of you know, they have been searching landfills. This landfill search seems to be separate from the ones before. Now, I heard a lot of rumors that there were landfill searches going on. 
you know, I had no confirmation. I just saw people sending me messages saying that supposedly searches were happening. So I guess there's merit to those um, messages. Uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, please remember the FBI is offering a $10,000 reward for any information. We haven't been making daily updates as the suspect is in custody and the FBI cases are very, very tight lipped. If you know something, say something. If you see something, say something. Thank you guys for sharing the pictures and telling your story. Uh, the more it's shared, the better chances someone might remember something off during the time she went missing and the days after. So, you know, I, I, I thought it would be kind of interesting. I don't know if I could find information or maybe reach out to somebody that knows how the whole landfill process works as far as what they do at a landfill. Is it possible to track a certain um, location or a whole area of location that's being dumped at a site? You know, I'm, I'm sure this, I don't know if they like track each dumpster. That'd probably be a lot to track like each dumpster where it's dumped at, but maybe for the general location of an area, all the trash that's being dumped from that area in certain locations of the landfill. The other thing I was wondering about is why the search for multiple landfills, you know, is it possible that he threw things in different dumpsters at different locations? Uh, or are they just not certain where this particular one by the racetrack went? They have to know where that one went. The FBI says surveillance cameras captured Ryan tossing trash into a dumpster at the same gas station Covet was last seen alive. It's that dumpster that led investigators to this landfill where they hope they can find clues into her disappearing. I also wanted to read this article to you guys that Kara sent me. This is one of the recent ones with the whole landfill situation by ABC. And, uh, you know, they stated here, federal prosecutors have said his only asset is a Lexus sedan with a missing front bumper. The car was seen at the apartment complex in Miramar where Cavett's son Camden was found wandering. Video surveillance at the gas station where Cavett was last spotted shows Ryan's Lexus at the station pumps where he had claimed to be. Cavett's relatives say that she had kept in touch with them over Facebook Messenger, but those messages stopped July 26. The newspaper reported that day Ryan used a debit card to make purchases at the racetrack gas station and the Walmart, which is like right next to each other, law enforcement says. Surveillance cameras show Ryan buying extra large 39 gallon trash bags and two boxes of extra strength carpet deodorizer that morning. 15 minutes later, the camera show Ryan going back to Walmart and buying a roll of advanced strength duct tape. Those purchases were made not long after the boy was abandoned. So they're saying, according to ABC, that those purchases for those items was after Camden was dropped off. A woman who lives in the complex found a child and alerted police. He remains in the state of custody. On August 15, investigators searched Ryan's car and found a half-empty container of all-purpose cleaner with bleach, several black trash bags, and a white powdery substance under the front passenger seat. Ryan's search history suggests he may have been planning to dispose of remains. The other article that I kind of wanted to briefly read over, another article that Kara sent me, and this is kind of recapping, but... Um, I mean, it's kind of interesting, the wording too. We've heard of the ransom thing a couple of times and a couple of times people, people have brought up the charge. What is the charge of Shannon Ryan? Uh, Shannon Ryan 38 was charged with kidnapping in August as it is believed he dropped off Camden in the area he was found. Authorities believe he intended to collect a ransom reward or other benefit by holding Cavett. Well, if you haven't heard already, which we've talked about a couple of times, the Google searches that he did a uh, federal search warrant executed on Ryan's phone shows that he made various Google searches, including what day does commercial garbage pick up for Hollywood, Florida, and does bleach and alcohol make chloroform? As well as, as we keep talking about this, I don't know what is up with the recovered shovels with small droplets of a red substance on it. I believe it was two shovels. The complaint said several employees at the gas station were interviewed by investigators. One recognized Ryan and had seen him near the trash bin. Another employee remembered seeing women's clothing and children's toys in the trash and recognized a pair of floral pants worn by Cavett. The complaint said that's it for this video thank you guys for all the support make sure you hit the like button the share button all that good stuff when you subscribe make sure you turn on the bell with all notifications because by default it's not all the notifications you're gonna miss videos live streams all that good stuff and take care of yourselves comment down below let me know your thoughts what's next for the channel i'm not sure yet there's a lot of stories out there that we could cover and i'm also doing the local aspect and so i don't know i i i
you know, we had that Daniel Beach body that was uh, found and I went out there and recorded. I thought that was really dope. I really like to do that. So I don't know if um, for Sophie or something else comes up recently, we'll maybe go out to the area and just kind of show you guys what the area is like. It might even be more interesting for some of these areas. I'll look at it, what it looks like at night. I'll need to get like a flash, like a light to put onto the camera, but that might be interesting too. So um, stay tuned. Thank you guys for all the support. Take care of yourselves and 